first of all, absolutely fantastic. I love being back in, in, in Ireland. Um, love, the, uh, lo love this event. It's one of my favorite ones. It was uh, one of my first Node events back in 2015. Uh, and just, I mean, so excited to see you all. Uh, you know, so many you know, familiar faces that I haven't seen for, for, for so long. It's great being back here. So um, what am I going to talk about? I'm going to talk about uh, uh, a little experiment that went wrong in Node. Um, I love talking about bugs, especially ones I, you know, I added, right? Um, I, you know, I said the joke that, you know, with, with all my Node contributions, I add the bugs, and other people come along and fix them. It's my contribution to the community, you know, bringing more contributors into the project. Um, in, in, in this particular case, um, I'm proud to say that the contributor that I brought into the project was my own son, who is here, who joined, you know, came out with, uh, uh, with me. So it was, uh, you know, kind of a fun, fun thing to do. Um, but clonable abort signal, um, or how I created a, a caused a major performance bug in the fetch implementation. How are these connected? Kind of, you know, what what was going on? That's what we're going to talk about. First, um, who am I? I'm James. Um, J. A. Snell for everyone. Um, uh, you know, who knows me on GitHub and Twitter. Um, I've co contributed a few things to Node over the years. Uh, the URL parser, web crypto, HP2 abort controller, web streams, a few other things. Um, my latest <laughs> small contribution is a 38,000 line PR um, that um, is adding quick. So uh, a few small things. Um, I also work at Cloudflare. Um, uh, we recently, uh, just last week, um, open sourced Worker D, which is kind of the core part of the, of the Cloudflare workers uh, uh, platform, where you can run it locally uh, now. So it's not just limited to the edge environment. So it's something uh, fun to play with. I'm not going to be talking about that here, but if you want to uh, um, uh, talk about it, Grab me anytime, the uh, um, you know out out and about, and I'm happy to show you some demos of that thing. It's it's it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, and this is Lala. Um, she's my COVID puppy. Uh, I miss her. Um, she's at home. We have five dogs all together. I say you know so well. We have five all together. My wife has four. I have Lala. Um, so yeah. Okay. So a while back there was an issue opened in the Undici repo, um, talking about fetch performance parity. Basically, what this is looking at is, you know, the indeed you did the, the implementation of fetch. It's what we use and um, pull that into Node, and that's how we get fetch in Node now uh, through this. But when we first started looking at this, um, it was like, okay, how well does this perform? And it was found that it performed really badly. Um, it was very, very slow. Uh, and this issue was, start, was open to start taking a look at what those issues were. Um, you know, Ethan's going to be talking about the, you know, fetch a little bit more, but importantly, the fetch implementation makes use of the new readable stream and writable stream, that's the web streams um, APIs, that are in there. Specifically, when you create a new request object or re response object, right, you're creating the, this writable stream or readable stream instances, right? And that's key, particularly the writable stream part. Folks testing this discovered that you know, just creating these objects were really slow. It, you know, it may be hard to read, but what we're seeing up here, if we look at this P99 percentile, just to create a request object that was not being used, uh, in this benchmark was taking about 20, or about 12,000 uh, uh, milliseconds, right? When they created a standalone test that wasn't using this, doing the exact same thing uh, in this simple bespoke version, it was only taking 25 milliseconds. <laughs> Slight disparity, right? It was kind of an ouch moment, right? Um, so why the hell was this so slow? Um, and you know, I don't expect you to, to, to read this you know, you know, fine graph at all. But um, it turns out what this is telling us is it had absolutely nothing to do with fetch itself uh, uh, whatsoever. What, is, what this is telling us, you know, right in here, what you can't read it, um, is that creating an abort signal as part of creating the request object is what was so slow. That's what was slowing it down. Fetch uses writable stream. Whenever a writable stream is created, an abort signal instance is also created, whether you're using it or not. Okay? So the, per the API with request, uh, you can actually pass in an abort controller or abort signal so that if you want to cancel the fetch operation, right, you can just use that abort controller dot abort and signal that, that, that it should be uh, canceled. If you do not pass that in, 
an abort signal is created automatically for you anyway. So there's always this abort signal instance that is you know, used inside that, um, uh, inside that writable stream, inside that request. Okay, so it's always there. Just creating the object uh, creates the, uh, the, the abort signal. And just creating that was very, very, very slow. All right, so why was it creating, you know, why was this slow? Again, nothing to do with fetch whatsoever. It actually had to do with a, another experiment, another bit of code that, that, that I contributed, I think it was 2020, on a completely unrelated topic, all right? Um, we have this idea of cloning an abort signal. And what do I mean by cloning? So if you are using uh, uh, worker threads in Node, right? And you want to send a value from one worker thread to the other, right? You're using the post message API, right? You create the other worker, you want to send an object over, post message that object in a sense. What's actually happening under the covers is this algorithm called the structured cloning algorithm will copy that object right, into a binary stream, move that binary stream over to the worker thread, it deserializes it back into the objects on, on the other side. Nice. Structured cloning algorithm is part of the DOM specification. Um, it, you know, if you use the structured clone uh, method, um, it's there. Uh, it's part of post message. Um, it, it is, it, it, it's very flexible, right? It supports a lot of um, um, different JavaScript values. And using it for abort signal, what that meant for us is that we could create an abort signal on the main worker, node worker thread, okay? Create a, a new worker thread that says, you know, that's performing some bit of activity. I could create the abort signal in one, clone it, so that when I trigger the abort in one thread, it notifies in the other, right? It's a pretty useful, um, uh, you know, um, uh, Pretty useful bit, bit, of, um, uh, bit of functionality. But it's purely experimental. If you look at the spec for abort signal, it doesn't say anything about it being clonable. Um, it was just something you just wanted to try and just see how it worked. And we have some projects um, uh, based on the Piscina um, a worker thread library that actually make use of this and, and allow some cross-thread signaling of, of, of cancellations. But there was a problem. Abort signal is implemented as a JavaScript class. Okay, which means that you, it's using that class syntax, right? The other part is that it extends from event target. Now, these two facts are what make this particularly difficult to implement as a clonable object in, in, in JavaScript and in V8. First of all, the structured cloning algorithm does not work with JavaScript classes, right? You can give it an object, and it'll clone all of the own properties, the direct properties of that object, right, into the new one. If you create, if you have a JavaScript class, like, you know, class abort signal, and you create new abort signal, and you pass that um, instance into the structured clone al algorithm, you'll get an, a, a, a regular JavaScript object. It will not be an instance of that class, right? Um, none of the properties on that will be there. So, you know, with you have JavaScript, a, a JavaScript class, you have like the get get properties, whatever, that are defined and it being defined on the prototype. When you structure clone those, none of those properties get copied over either, right? So it's just, you know, an empty class basically is what you end up getting. So structure cloning algorithm does not work with JavaScript classes, so with abort signal being a JavaScript class, it's not going to work out of the box with that protocol. To make it possible to clone an instance of a JavaScript class, we have to treat it with what we call a host object, all right? And this is a V8 concept. We use V8 under the covers to implement the JavaScript bits. And when we say it's a host object, what that means is we have to implement the logic ourselves in Node to serialize and deserialize that object when it's being transferred, okay? Unfortunately, V8 only allows us to treat C++ objects as host objects. And in Node, we have uh, a whole class of uh, kind of these internal objects that have a JavaScript wrapper object. And then underneath the covers, they're, they're linked to this, this underlying C++ object under the covers. And that C++ object being connected to the JavaScript is what we can, you know, is what we define as a host object in Node. And we have the ability to uh, uh, selectively, within Node itself, to say, okay, this is a, a clonable host object 
or it's a transferable host object, or it's not, or it can't be used with this algorithm at all. So we can selectively enable that at the C++ level. Um, to make abort signal clonable, we had to link it to a C++ object. Okay? That was problem number one. Um, Node has an internal helper object called JS transferable that allows us to do this. It's, it's, it's not exposed for external users to use uh, at all, but internally, uh, we can re, you know, um, use our internal binding to grab an instance of this thing, create this, or have a class extend from this. And by doing so, we make that class, that JavaScript class, uh, uh, transferable. Uh, okay? Um, I already said that. Okay. Um, but it, it's not quite that simple. Like I said, uh, the class also extends from event target. We don't want to make all event targets clonable. Right? You know, we only wanted to make abort signal, which is an event target. We only wanted to make that one. But JavaScript does not allow multiple inheritance. So we have, you know, our typical pattern is we would create a class and have it extend from JS transferable. Works. Um, but we can't do, you know, abort, uh, abort signal, abort controller. Uh, this should say abort signal. We can't make abort signal uh, inherit from both event target and JS transferable. So how are we going to make this actually work, uh, right? We hacked it. It's a bit of, you know, complex code just copied directly from, from node's source. Um, what this is doing is it takes any object that you pass in, and it's got to be an object. It can't be any other, like, primitive value or whatever else. It, makes, it, it takes that object and makes it transferable, even if it does not extend from JS transferable. Now, I'll kind of walk through this in, in just a bit. If this looks like a big blobby mess. It is a big blobby mess. Um, so, you know, it's, it's got a number of things that we use specifically in Node, such as, I mean, if you see this, like, object-defined properties, and it's all, all one. Uh, in Node, we actually capture the, 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 the intrinsic primitive functions, um, and we capture those up front so they can't be monkey-patched later and replaced. It's, it's a whole thing. It makes it really complex. But we take these objects and allow them to be transferable by instead making a JS transferable that extends from the object. So we're inverting the relationship, okay? So instead of creating abort signal extending from uh, uh, event target, which extends from JS transferable or anything there, right? What we're doing is creating a JS transferable and then setting its prototype to abort signal, all right? And what, the, and what the object that we actually give to users is not the abort signal directly. It's actually this JS transferable that extends from it. And we can do this dynamically, and that's what that code is, um, uh, is doing. We can kind of walk through that if we have time. Um, this is possible using some built-in concepts, reflect con uh, construct, object set prototype of, object defined properties. Okay? So here's the process. First, we create the abort signal. In the process of creating that, it goes and creates its prototype event target. Great. Then we create the separate JS transferable. And then we copy all of the abort signals uh, property definitions to that JS transferable. And then we set the JS transferable's prototype to abort signal. Let's go back and look at the code real quick. So that's what we're doing here. So we get the object. If it's already a JS transferable, we just return it. Done. All right? Then we create this const int equals reflect construct. This is, if you're not familiar with this particular function, it will use what, the, the first argument. That's kind of the, the constructor function that is called. The last one is kind of you know, what type of thing you're, you're, you're creating. So it's extremely flexible. You can do all kinds of different things. But basically, what we're doing here is lying. We're saying that we're creating a, a, a um, we're, we're giving it the, the abort signal constructor, but we're creating it as a JS transferable. Uh, in actually almost creating one object masquerading as another. Um, but that's not all uh, we have to do. We also like to you know, copy all of the, the, the property descriptors from one to the other, right? Um, that kind of allows it to masquerade. Just by, set, just by creating the object doesn't mean all of the, the, the methods and everything um, copy over. So we're kind of masquerading this thing that we just created. And then we set the, uh, the actual prototype of that JS transferable to the abort signal, all right? Now, all of this, it's, it, it's, very, it's a very magical, magical way of creating slow code. <laughs> um, it worked, right? But it's, <laughs> it, it, it is actually very, very slow. 
And the reason it is slow is, you know, you know because of that process. Uh, manipulating or, or creating the C++-backed objects is slow. Anytime we cross from the JavaScript to the C++ boundary, um, it's, it's super slow. And, and this is actually doing that uh, at least once. So it cre creating the objects, manipulating the prototype and the properties of existing objects is slow. You're changing the shape of that thing, so it changes the way that V8 can optimize it. And there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a number of challenges with that. And we were doing this every time an abort signal was created, which means we were also doing it every time um, a writable stream was created. And we're also doing it every time a, um, a request object is created. So you know, we're adding basically just you know, overhead on top of overhead on top of overhead for an experiment that had absolutely nothing to do with, 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 with fetch and wasn't even standard, right? Um, so the fix was simple. <laughs> we just stopped doing it. Um, uh, we just simply made it where abort signal was no longer clonable by default. Um, uh, it's still useful, so there's new APIs in there to, to make it uh, clonable. Um, technically, it was a breaking change, um, but we, we kind of skirt around that by the fact that this is all experimental code. All right. um, so we uh, uh, kind of were able to fudge the breaking change a little bit. Um, but you know, j just by removing this one little experimental hack, um, we were able to boost the performance of just fetch in general significantly. Um, and this is just, I mean, th th this is the part I love the most. Um, my son is the one that actually landed the, the, the pull request for the fix. Um, and Node is officially a multi-generational project. It's one of the, the only multi-generational projects. So, you know, I, you know, super proud about this. <laughs> so, and, and, and that's, you know, the moral of the story. Nothing. Um, you know, it, it, it was a it was a fun bug to talk about. I love getting up here. I mean, I've, I've been writing you know code professionally for tw 22 years. I still make egregious bugs. Yeah, it happens. Um, you know, uh, you know, everyone. It, it's always going to happen. Uh, these are the, the the things I enjoy talking about the most, simply because you know you you learn a lot about you know the platform. You learn a lot a lot about the process. Um, seeing the little bit of node code up here, you know, you know that little chunk is just like this egregious mess of, <laughs> of, of sludge to, to, to get through. That's a lot of the node internals. It does make it hard to, to, to get in, in, into the project. But these are the things that, that, that I think really you know, drive a deeper understanding of, of what node is doing in the process that we go through. So that was it. Thank you.